Hey guys, welcome to another online math class. This video will be about data displays and by the end of this lesson, we should know which graphs are used for numerical or categorical data, be able to construct different data displays, find the mean, medium, mode, and also be able to classify a graph as either positively skewed, negatively skewed, or symmetrical. Let's just pause the video here and take a couple of minutes to write these down. All right, let's start off with a quick recap of the different graphs using stats and which type of data they're used for. So we're going to start off with a single set of categorical or discrete numerical data. And the graphs used for this type of data is a dot plot, a stem and leaf plot, or a column graph. And just keep in mind, column graphs can also be called bar graphs. So once again, these are used by a single set of categorical data or numerical discrete data. So we learned what these are in the last lesson. Just let me know if you're still struggling with what they are. And the next type of data display we're going to go through are histograms and this can be used for either grouped discrete numerical data or continuous numerical data. So just keep in mind if it's discrete numerical data they have to be grouped. So looking at this example here this is an example of grouped discrete numerical data. So that means the scores between 0 to 10 percent here have been grouped so everyone that got 0 to 10 percent will be in that group there. This second one is 10 to 20. So everyone that got 10 to 20 will be in that group there. So that's about five people got a score of 10 to 20. This next group is 20 to 30, and that will be eight people there. So that's just the score, not the percentage, sorry. So anyone that got a score between 20 to 30, there was eight people in that group there. And we can also create a frequency table using this, or you could create this using a frequency table. It could go either way around, and it looks something like that. So once again, the first group, 0 to 10, is over here, and there was three people in there. And the percentage of people was 15%. So 15%, which is also three people, got a score of 0 to 10. Next group is 10 to 20, and just below. And note that 10 uh, dash there, that means it includes all numbers from 10 to less than 20. So it doesn't include the score 20 there. And just a quick recap on how to calculate the percentage. So to find the percentage of this first one there, so that's that box, you would do three divided by 20 times 100, which will give you 15. So I'll just write that there. That's how you would get that 15% there. And just a key thing to point out, these two are not the same. The one on the left, either called a column graph or a bar graph, and the one on the right is a histogram. The main difference is that the bar graph has little gaps in between them, as you can see there and histogram, they're all stuck together. This is because uh, bar graphs are used for categorical data, whereas histograms are used for numerical data. So in numerical data, the number numbers need to be put together because there's a flow with the numbers. And in categorical data, they're all individual groups, so you don't stick them together. And once again, bar graphs are used for categorical data, whereas histograms are used for numerical data. Make sure you know the difference between those two. All right, now that we've done a quick recap of the different types of data, let's have a go at an example question here. This question says 20 people were surveyed to find out how many times they use the internet in a week. The raw data are listed. And the first question says, organize the data into a frequency table using class intervals of 10, include a percentage frequency column. So the first thing we would need to do is draw a table. And let's just draw the outline, it will look something like that there. So I've got the class interval on the left, the frequency in the middle, and percentage frequency on the right. So my first group, let's call it 0 to 10. So let's write 0 dash. Next one would be 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, and our last one, let's go 40 to 50 there. And so, and let's write total at the bottom. And now we're going to count the amount of data between 0 to 10. I can see 1, 2, and I think that's it, just two there. Now let's count how many there is between 10 to 20. There's one here, that's another, that's two, that's three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There's a total of eight there. So we're gonna do that for each of the boxes. And once you've counted them all out, I think we get the idea, it's gonna be look something like that. And we're gonna try and add them up. That's two plus eight, that's 10, plus five is 15, plus four is 19, plus one is 20. It says 20 people were surveyed, so there should be 20 data points. That's just a quick way we can check that we've done the counting properly. Once you add these up and it doesn't equal 20 or whatever number that's stated in the question, that's a clear indication that we've made a counting error there. And now let's have a go at finding the percentage frequency. So first one will be two 
over 20 times 100. Just chuck that in your calculator. This one will be 8 over 20 times 100. This one will be 5 over 20 times 100, and so on. If you work these out, that will give you 10%. So it will give you 40. That will give you 25. That will give you 20. And that will give you 5. At the bottom, we're going to add all these percentages together, and you should get something very close to 100, if not 100. So you might get something like 99.9%, .9%, that's all right, or you might get something like 100.1. So these are very close. Uh, if you're off by like 0.1 to 100, that's okay. It just means it's probably because of the rounding of the percentages. All right, so that's the first one done, question A. Now we have to construct a histogram for the data. So for a histogram, I'm going to have the frequency on the left there. So let's write that, frequency. And down the bottom, I'll just draw the axis a bit further so I can write the numbers in. And down the bottom, I'm going to have the score. And my intervals are 0 to 20, so my first one will look like that. That's 0 to 10. Next is 10 to 20. Next is 20 to 30. Next is 30 to 40. And the last one is 40 to 50. And on the top, on the left, sorry, I'm going to have the frequency, so let's go, let's go up in twos. Two, four, six, eight, and ten. So from zero to ten, I have two. So I'm going to draw a bar with two. From ten to twenty, I've got eight. Draw a bar goes to eight. Next one, I've got twenty to thirty, which is five. Draw a bar there. And then I've got 30 to 40, which is 4. And then 40 to 50, which is 1. So there we go. So that's what your histogram should look like. Please make sure you're using a ruler when doing this. All right, now moving on to the next question. Question C, it says construct a stem and leaf plot for the data. So a new slide there. All right, so let's start off by drawing the outline. I've got stem on the left and leaf on the right. Alright, so my intervals were 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And in that first row, it's just all these single digit numbers. Uh, make sure they're in order from smallest to largest. So let's have a look at the single digit numbers. I can see one here, and there should be another one, and it's right there. So this means 2, and this means 5. That doesn't mean 25, this means 2, and that means 5. Alright, next one. These are all the two digit numbers starting with 1. I can see one there, I can see another there. So make sure they're in order from smallest to largest. That's one, that's two, let's just cross the numbers off as we go. Next smallest is a 13, by the looks of it. Next is 14. Next is 15. Then 16. And then 18 and 19. So we should have a total of 8, remembering from our, our histogram before. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm just missing one. I think I forgot to write that 11, so I just put a 1 in between there. So once again, this means 10, that means 11. This means 13, that means 14, that means 15, and so on. Just let me know if you're uh, finding this a bit confusing. And once you've filled out the stem and leaf plot, it should look something like this. So just make sure you're trying to line up the numbers as best as possible. And we also need a key, just showing what it means. So just write something like that. That means 31. So make sure you include that. There will be marks designated just to the key there. This is important because sometimes that might mean 3.1. So you need to point that out. All right, so that's question C. And question D says, use your stem and leaf plot to find the median. So that's a measure of center. So before we do that, let's have a go at going through the different measures of centers. So our first measure of center is called the mean. It's often written like this using that symbol X bar. And it's calculated using the sum of all the data values divided by the number of data values. So if I had a set of data like two, three, and four to find the mean, so X bar, it will be two plus three plus four, so the sum of all those data values divided by how many there is, so divided by three. And whatever you get will be your answer there. Next one is the median. So that's the middle value when the data are placed in order. There's a shortcut to finding this, and there's a little formula, and that is n plus one divided by two. So n is how many data points there are, so in this case it will be three, and then plus one divided by two. Let's try that. That gives me three plus one over uh, two, that gives me 4 over 2, so that means the second data point is my median. So 1, 2, that one there. 
It doesn't mean two is my median, it means the second data point once listed in order is my median. And our last one is the mode. It's not necessarily the image of center, but it's still very important information. This is just the most common value. All right, now back to the question before. Now that we know them, let's have a go at finding the median there. So the good thing about the stem and leaf plot is that it already orders it from smallest to largest, so we don't need to do that again. Remember to find the median, let's use n plus one over two again. So n was the number of data. We know that there's 20, so that becomes 20 plus one over two. So we get 21 over two, and 21 divided by two gives you 10.5. So that means my median is in between the 10th and the 11th number. So somewhere in between those two. So let's count that through. That's the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and 10th. So it's gonna be somewhere in between there. If you get something like this, if it's like not straight up the 10th number or 11th number, we just find the average of those two numbers. So I've got 18 here and 19 there. So what I'll do is 18 plus 19 divided by two, and that gives you 18.5. So the median for this one is just 18.5. All right, so there's another example question for you. Have a go at doing this one. Pause the video here. Just unpause it once you've done them all and ready to go through it with me. And for question A here, the first one, uh, that's what your frequency table should look like. So just give yourself a tick if you've got that correct. And now question B, this is what your histogram should look like. Give yourself a tick if you got that one correct as well. Just let me know if you have any questions with that. So the first group, 0 to 10, lines up with the frequency table. There's 6 here and 6 there. Let's check another one, 20 to 30. There's 3 there and there's 3 here as well. So we know we're doing well there. And now question C, the stem and leaf uh, plot. Remember, stem goes on the left and the leaf goes on the right. So let's just draw that in. I'll have the stem here and the leaf there. Let's draw a line to separate the two. And the first one was zero to 10, next was 10 to 20, next was 20 to 30. That should be a one, sorry, not a 10. And our biggest number was in the 30, so that one there. So let's just stop it at 30. And drawing the leaf from smallest to largest. And that's what it should look like. Let's just count that we've got 16 sets of data just to make sure we're correct. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So I've got 16, so I know I'm on the right track there. And last thing we need, make sure you got the key. Let's just pick a random number. So let's go 3, means 32. Make sure you've got the key in there. And now to find the median. So there's 16 sets of data. So the median was n plus one over two. So it will be, n is the number of points again, so numbers, number of data. So that's 16 plus one over two. That gives me 17 over two, which is 8.5. So it's gonna be between the eighth and the ninth data set there. So let's count that. That's the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. So it's gonna be between 11 and 12. So I'm gonna find the average of those two. So do 11 plus 12 divided by two. And if you chuck that in the calculator, it will give you a value of 11.5. So the answer to question D, the median is 11.5. There, give yourself a tick if you got that correct as well. And our last goal for today was being able to identify a graph as symmetrical, positively skewed, and negatively skewed. So symmetrical, like the name says, that's when the left and the right look the same. Doesn't have to look exactly the same as long as it's similar. Notice how this one is a little bit uh, lower than that one. But roughly, if you fold it in half, they will pr uh, produce the same image. So that's symmetrical on the left. The next one we have positively skewed. That's when it goes up on the left and goes down to the right. So if I draw that in, it's high on the left and it goes down there. So there's a tail on the right hand side. That's what positively skewed is. And negatively skewed is just the other way. The tail's on the left and it goes up as we go to the right. So when given a histogram or maybe even a stem and leaf plot, we need to be able to determine if it's positively skewed or negatively skewed. Let's have a look here. All right, so looking at this, would you say that's positively skewed or negatively skewed? Looking back at our pictures, you might want to draw that in. Tail on the right means positively skewed, and this has a tail on the right there, so I would say this is positively skewed. And now let's look at the next one, the one we did before. So just that one there. This one also has a tail on the right, so this one would also be positively skewed there. So just make sure you've got those diagrams down into your book so you can refer to them later as they will be important in helping you identify which graph is which there. Otherwise, that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys all back online.